Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel once again. In this video, we will discuss the monitor step of the risk management framework, the RMF, and what activities are required to be performed in this step. But before we start, a free way to support the channel is by subscribing to help the channel grow. And also do remember to like and hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. All right, let's get rolling. Information system continuous control monitoring. Last step of the RMF is the continuous monitoring or ongoing authorization. So why do we need a monitor step? The purpose of the monitor step is to maintain an ongoing situational awareness about the security and privacy posture of the information system and organization in support of risk management decisions. As explained in the NIST special publication 8137, the executive summary, information security is a dynamic process that must be effectively and proactively managed for an organization to identify and respond to new vulnerabilities, evolving threat, and an organization's constantly changing enterprise architecture and operational environment. Information Security Continuous Monitoring, ISCM, is defined as maintaining ongoing awareness of information security, vulnerabilities, and threat to support organizational risk management decision. Moving along with the executive summary on page seven, it says that organization-wide monitoring cannot be efficiently achieved through manual processes alone or through automated processes alone. Automated processes, including the use of automated support tools, example, vulnerability scanning tools, network scanning devices, can make the process of continuous monitoring more cost-effective, consistent, and efficient. The executive summary continues by saying that it is important to recognize that with any comprehensive information security program, all implemented security controls, including management and operational controls, must be regularly assessed for effectiveness, even if the monitoring of such controls cannot be automated or is not easily automated. Organization take the following steps to establish, implement, and maintain ISCM. Number one, Define an ISCM strategy. Two, establish an ISCM program. Three, implement an ISCM program. Four, analyze data and report findings. Five, respond to findings and review and update the ISCM strategy and program. A robust ISCM program thus enable organization to move from compliance-driven risk management to data-driven risk management, providing organizations with information necessary to support risk response decision, security status information, and ongoing insight into security control effectiveness. All right, moving on. The continuous control monitoring can be achieved by periodically testing a portion of the 853 controls manually and also periodically running vulnerability scans such as the Nessus, Web Inspect, Nespos, DB Protect, and so on. The manual testing can be accomplished by testing a portion of the controls, usually one third of the 853 controls annually. The system follows the pattern of testing Priority 1 P1 controls the first year after assessment, Priority 1 and Priority 2 controls the second year, and then Priority 1, 2, and 3 the third year to complete the testing or in some cases, just risk-based control testing manually or annually by selecting some key controls or as determined by the agency. So this prioritization testing is possible when you're using the 853 Rev4. In that document, we have the security control prioritization code that tells you exactly the order of control implementation, as you can see here. But in Rev 5, we can see from the NIST Special Publication 853B, which is the new baseline documentation for the Revision 5 documentation. You notice that the control baseline did not specify any priority codes of implementation. Meaning that the method of testing using the priority code will not be applicable moving forward. In that case, the only logical control testing will just be risk-based control testing monthly or annually by selecting some key controls or as determined by the agency. The P1, P2, P3 prioritization code method will not be applicable moving forward. Also, periodic vulnerability scanning is performed to check for vulnerability within the system. The frequency is determined by the criticality of the system and the agency. And again, NIST Special Publication 
137 and special publication 853 are used as a guide for the continuous control monitoring process. To download and run Nessus Vulnerability Scanner on your personal laptop for practice, check out my videos on that on the channel. To achieve an effective continuous control monitoring, audit log aggregation and analysis of device security event also support the Information Security Continuous Monitoring, ISCM. As we can see on page 72 of NIST Special Publication 800-137, it says, Aggregation and analysis technology are those that have the capability to collect raw data from one or more security controls or other direct data gathering technology and correlate, analyze, and represent the raw data in a way that provide a more meaningful perspective on the effectiveness of security control implementation across part or all of an organization than would data from a single technology. All right, so moving on to enhance the ability to identify inappropriate or unusual activity, organization may integrate the analysis of vulnerability scanning information, performance data, network monitoring, and system audit record information through the use of SIM tools. SIM tools are a type of centralized logging software that can facilitate aggregation and consolidation of logs from multiple information system components. SIM tool can also facilitate audit record correlation and analysis. The correlation of audit record information with vulnerability scanning information is important in determining the veracity of the vulnerability scans and correlating attack detection event with scanning results. All right, so moving on on page 73. The implementation and effective use of SIEM technology can assist organizations in automating the implementation, assessment, and continuous monitoring of several NIST SP853 security controls, including AC5, separation of duties, AU2, auditable event, AU6, audit review, analysis, and reporting, AU7, audit reduction and report generation, CA2, security assessments, CS7, continuous monitoring, IR5, incident monitoring, PE6, monitoring physical access, RA3, risk assessment, RA5, vulnerability scanning, and SI4, information system monitoring. All right, so to conclude this video, these are some examples of SIEM tools. We have the Splunk, we have the Oxite, we have the IBM Q Radar, Log Rhythm, and Alien Vault. All of these same tools can, can help in the information security continuous monitoring process of an organization. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you find this video useful, do like so the YouTube algorithm can expose this video to a lot of people. Share and subscribe if you have not already subscribed. Please do comment below and let me know your thought on this video. And I will see you in the next video.